Hello friends, in this video, I will discuss Johnson's rule. This is part two of Johnson's rule in that I'll discuss N jobs three machines case. So to understand the sequencing of N jobs on three machines, let's take one illustration here. So here we are given with six jobs, which we need to perform on three machines and their respective processing time on all the three machines are given in the table. With this, we need to find the optimal sequence of these six jobs on these three machines. And also we need to find the minimum elapsed time. And also we will find the idle time for all the three machines. So let's start the solution part of this. So to solve the problem of N jobs, three machines, Firstly, we need to convert these three machines into two machines. So let's assume that we are creating two artificial machines. So these two artificial machines suppose are X and Y. These are the two names which I have taken. Now to solve the problem, firstly, we need to find the processing time of these two artificial machines. So for getting the processing time, what we need to do, we need to add the processing time of machine A and machine B means processing time of first two machines we need to add to get the processing time of the first artificial mach machine. Then to get the second artificial machine processing time, we need to add the last two machines processing time. So this way we will get the processing times for two artificial machines. So in this table, you can see after adding the times of machine A and B, we are getting the time for machine X and similarly for machine Y. Now with this artificial machines, now with these processing times of artificial machines X and Y, we will go for sequencing of the jobs. So for sequencing of the jobs, firstly, we are making a grid of one by six because we have six jobs in total and then we need to put first machine at left hand side and second machine at right hand side so that is why machine x is we have kept at the left hand side and machine y we have kept at the right hand side so now we'll begin the processing of the sequencing of the jobs so for sequencing of the jobs we need to identify the minimum processing time irrespective of the machines. So here we can see in all these processing times, the minimum one is four, which is corresponding to job four. So that means we are allocating job four on machine X. So that is why at the side of machine X in the grid, we are writing four and then we are canceling out or deleting the job four. Then we will again go for finding of the minimum processing time. So the next minimum processing time is six, which is corresponding to job number five. So that means we are allocating job five on machine X and in the grid after four, we will write five and we will cancel job five. Now, next minimum processing time is seven and in the table seven is coming two times. So now question comes, which seven we need to pick. So firstly, both the seven is falling on the same machine. So now we need to check their processing time on the other machine. So for the first seven, the processing time on machine Y is 11 and for the next seven processing time on the machine Y is 15. So we can compare this 11 and 15 and we can say this 11 is less than 15. So that means we need to give priority to first seven. So that is why we are leaving the last seven and taking the first seven and which is corresponding to job two. So that means we are allocating job two on machine X. So in the grid after five, we are entering two and here we are deleting job two. Now next minimum processing time is seven, which is corresponding to job six. So again, we are allocating job six 
on machine X. And after two in the grid, we are writing six. And then we are canceling out job six. Now, next minimum processing time in the table is 11. And 11 is coming three times. So always we have to give priority to machine one. That is machine X. So that means we have to leave remaining to 11. So we are going with the first 11, which is corresponding to job one. So we are allocating job one on machine X. And after six in the grid, we are writing one and then we are canceling out the job one. So now the single job is left. That is the job three. So in the grid also only one place is vacant. So we are directly putting job three in the grid. So this way we have sequenced the jobs and after sequencing of the jobs, we need to just create a table in that we will write the sequencing of the jobs and according to this sequence, we will write the processing time of each jobs on all the three machines. And after this, we will go for finding the in time and out time on all the three machines. With that, we will get the total elapsed time or the minimum elapsed time. So here in this table, we have to calculate the in time and out time for all the three machines. So one assumption of Johnson's rule is that that all the machines will start at the same time and also they will close at the same time. So here with this assumption, we are filling this table. So at, for the first job, that is job four in the sequence, in time on the first machine will be zero and out time would be the in time plus the processing time. So that is zero plus two, two. So now this two will become in time for the next job and the out time would be the two plus the processing time. That is the two plus five, seven. Now seven will become the in time and then out time would be seven plus three, 10. Now 10 would be the in time, 10 plus one, 11 is the out time. Then 11 is the in time for job one and out time would be 19, that is 11 plus eight, 19 would be the in time for last job and out time would be the 19 plus seven, 26. So this way, firstly, we have calculated in and out time for machine A. Now with the help of this, we will calculate in and out time for machine B. So for the first job, that is job number four, the in time on the next machine would be the out time of the same job on the first machine. So that is on the first machine, the out time for job four is two. So that would become the in time for the same job on machine B. Now out time would be the in time plus processing time. So that is two plus two, four. Now to get the in time for next job on machine B, we need to make compare the out time of the same job on the previous machine and the out time of the previous job on the machine B. So that means we need to make comparison in between seven and four. So whatever is greater than that we will keep here. So rather than keeping four, we will keep here seven. And then seven plus processing time, that is one. So eight would be the out time. Now we need to compare 10 and eight. So which one is greater? 10 is greater. So we are keeping here 10 and then 10 plus 4, 14 is the out time. Now 14 and 11. So we need to compare these two. So 14 is greater. So we are keeping here 14. Now 14 plus 6, 20 is the out time. 20 and 19. So 20 is greater than. So we are keeping here 20. 20 plus 3, 23 is the out time. Now we need to make comparison between 26 and 23. So 26 is greater than 23. So logic behind this why we are keeping the greater time here because once the machine A will complete or finish any job, only then it will pass it on to the next machine. So the machine A will complete last job at the 26th minute. So that is why we are taking the 26th minute as the in time on the next machine. 
and the out time would be 26 plus 531. So this way we have calculated in and out time on machine B. Now for machine C, for the first job, in time would be the out time of the first job on the previous machine. So that is 4 would be the in time. Then out time would be the 4 plus 9, 13. Now we need to make comparison between this 8 and 13. So 13 is greater than 8. So we are keeping here 13. Then 13 plus 10, 23. Again, 23 is greater than 14. So we are keeping here 23 as an end time. Then 23 plus 7, 30. We are taking 30 as an end time. Then 30 plus 9, 39. 39 is again greater than 23. So we are taking 39 as an end time. Then 39 plus 8, 47 is the out time. Then 47 and 31. So we are keeping here 47 and 47 plus 6, 53 is the out time for the last job on machine C. So this way, firstly, we have calculated in time and out time for all the six jobs on all three machines. Now with this table, we will calculate the minimum elapsed time and also we will calculate the idle time for all the three machines. So here, firstly, we will calculate the total completion time or the total elapsed time or we can say it is the minimum elapsed time. So the minimum elapsed time would be the out time of the last job on the last machine that is 53 because we are knowing this thing that all the three machines will start at the same time and they will also close at the same time. So until and unless the machine C that is the last machine that will process all the jobs only then all the three machines will be shut down. So that is why the out time of the last job on last machine would be the minimum elapsed time. So here we are writing 53. Now we will calculate the idle time for machine A. So this would be the difference of the last job on the last machine and on the machine A. This is like this. So the difference of 53 and 26 would be the idle time for machine A. Again, you need to keep the logic here because all three machines will shut down at the same time. Now we will calculate the idle time for machine B. So for calculating idle time for machine B, firstly, we need to take the difference of the last job on the last machine and on the machine B. So firstly, we will take the out time of the last job on machine C, that is last machine and on machine B, that is the difference of 53 and 31, 22. So this is the first component of the idle time. Then second would be the two because all three machines will start at the same time and machine B will get its first job at the second hour. Means when the machine A will complete first task only then it will pass it on to the machine B. So till that time the machine B will be idle. So this two will also be included here in the idle time. And then we need to make comparison between these in and out time. So here we can see there is a difference. So that is why we are taking this difference as idle time. So that is seven minus four, three is the idle time. Then one more difference is existing here in between 10 and eight. So this would be two and one more difference we can find here that is 26 and 23. So that is three. Now total of these would be the idle time for machine B. That is the sum of 22, two, three, two and this three. So this way the sum of these would be 32. So 32 would be the idle time for machine B. Now for the last machine, machine C, we need to see the idle time would be only this four. And we can see here the difference between in and out time. So all are same, there is no difference. So that is why only four is here. That is the idle time for machine C. So this way we have calculated the minimum elapsed time and idle time for all the three machines after finding the optimal sequence for n jobs three machines. 
so friends i hope this video will help you to understand how we can sequence jobs on three machines with the help of johnson's rule and how we can calculate the minimum alleged time and the idle time for all the three machines so thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe my channel dr janchal jain for more such videos please like share and comment on my videos thank you so much happy learning to all